Hello and welcome everyone. I am Haley Joseph, ISCA member and today's host for our seventh Our Innovation Talk presentations to educate, inspire, and ignite your imagination. These 45 minute Zoom presentations are being offered live exclusively to our ISEA members on a quarterly basis. They cover a variety of topics to enrich, encourage, and support our members' creative journeys, which is a key component of our mission statement here at ISEA. Before I introduce our presenter, Lisa Boardwine, let me introduce you to today's question moderator, Kim Gill, and today's Zoom manager, April Rimpo, who is working behind the scenes to make this happen. A big thank you to them and our Art Innovation Talks Committee for making this presentation possible. Oh, thanks, Kim. Now it's time to introduce our speaker, Lisa Boardwine. Lisa is a painter who works in oil cold wax and acrylic mixed media. Lisa is a member of ISEA, a signature member of the Virginia Watercolor Society, and a signature artist member of the Baltimore Watercolor Society. She leads workshops in art retreats in oil cold wax and acrylic painting mixed media throughout the Eastern US. One of Lisa's favorite sayings to her students is, create a history, provide some mystery and make your mark. Lisa travels, enjoys traveling. So the spirit of place influences her current work. She shares her experiences and visual memories in her paintings. Mark making, altered surfaces, and the essence of landscapes are a common thread that runs throughout her work. Lisa has published three books on blurb.com and has had her work featured in several other books, including A Walk Into Abstracts. How do they do that? She has been the recipient of three residency fellowships at the Virginia Center for Creative Arts. Lisa offers online art courses and a monthly art membership through Patreon, allowing artists and students continue learning with her in addition to in-person workshops. She is represented by several galleries and art centers and has had work included in various collections both private and corporate, internationally and nationally. She, and she still has time to serve as the owner of Golden Palette Gallery Studio, a custom frame shop and gallery. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you, thank you. Thanks to everyone at ISEA and a special thanks to Kim, Haley, April, Mary Lou and Patty. I am so happy to be invited to do a presentation on something I love, which is painting in oil and cold wax medium. It, uh, it's a great medium, especially for experimental artists and to give yourself that freedom of play and exploration. Um, abstract painting is so easy, I feel, with this type of painting. It just lends itself to an abstract feel in your work. However, there are lots of painters who use oil and cold wax in a very realistic type of painting. So I'm going to switch my screen and show you um, a few things that I have on my table. Um, this style of painting is very highly expressive. So, you know, it's a way that you can really also have a bigger interaction with your materials. Um, we collect a lot of things to make marks in our work in oil and cold wax, to do textural things. And it is a process of building up layer after layer. The benefits of using cold wax with your traditional oil paint is that it makes the oil paint dry much faster. It gives the paint a certain bulk and body. It extends your paint 
it gives you beautiful luminous transparencies and um it it gives you a way to do a lot of different techniques so we build many layers um we can dig and excavate back through those layers to give us some really unique and interesting dynamics to this type of painting. Now, I want to uh, start by showing you some of the materials that is that are used for oil and coal wax. Uh, the main thing is it's traditional oil paint. And of course you can use any type of paint that you would like. Gamblin, Daniel Smith, Sennelier, Charvin, Old Holland, Windsor and Newton, because the type of paint, the brand of paint is totally up to you. And um, I say use the best paint that you can use for your budget. And, you know, save some of those wonderful fancy paints <laughs> that uh, we have that are much more expensive, but do have quite a larger pigment load. So they are more vibrant and uh, amazingly wonderful, but use any kind of oil paint you have. And then we mix our traditional oil paint with cold wax and there are a few types of cold wax there's dorlands which is made by jacquard it's a very creamy creamy cold wax um, then there is gamblin gamblin is a little bit purer a little more white in nature and of course um, you can also find lots of recipes online if you are, you know, if you lean towards making your own so you could control the amount of solvent and uh, things that are in the cold wax. Uh, cold wax is natural beeswax, a little touch of odorless mineral spirits or gamsol, and a touch of resin. And that evaporation is what makes this help the oil paint dry so much faster. Another beautiful quality of the oil and coal wax is that it dries to a matte finish. Typically oil painters, they have that beautiful, shiny, uh, glossy sheen on their oil paintings. And then after six months to a year, they varnish it with more glossy varnish. But oil and cold wax kind of goes the opposite way in that it dries to that very matte finish. However, if you choose now to have a glossy finish at the end of your painting, you can do a varnish called Gamvar that Gamblin makes and they have it in matte, satin, and glossy. So you can bring that gloss back to these paintings if you choose to in the end. Um, the surfaces or the substrates that we work on, you can work on absolutely any type of foundation as long as it is gessoed. So, Ampersand makes beautiful gesso boards. This is a flat one. Um, these are a little more economical because they don't have the cradle, but it's already pre-gessoed for you, which is fantastic. We use gessoed panels, which this is a cradled panel. So it's got the edge and you tape that edge off. So when you finish your masterpieces, all you have to do is take the tape off, put a hanger on the back and it's ready to go. I prefer working on the cradle panels myself. Then we have um, Ampersand also makes a gessoed encaustic board, a clay board, which has already been gessoed and hardboard. And the hardboard uh, is 
actually like tempered masonite. And I love to tell my students that you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and purchase a large sheet of the tempered masonite, make sure it's tempered. They will cut those boards into whatever sizes you want to paint on, which is a great uh, savings when you go larger and larger with your oil and cold wax paintings. Uh, it's a little more labor intensive because then you do have to come home and gesso the tempered masonite or these little boards by uh, ampersand. Um, they come in many sizes. Um, I have found that Utrecht professional gesso is the best gesso to use because one coat you're finished. It's very thick, like frosting. So I don't want to gesso, I want to paint. So one coat of gesso really is fantastic. Then there is a company called Multimedia Artboard. And they make an artboard that you can use any medium on. And it comes in four by five, all the way up to 30 by 40 in size. It already has been treated with a uh, process so that you don't have to gesso your multimedia. They are ready to go. So this is a great uh, surface for you to try. And I love working on multimedia artboard. Let me show you, this is a little piece uh, that is on the multimedia artboard. And you can tape your edges so that you have that beautiful white border. After you finish the painting, you peel your tape and it gives you that illusion of what it would look like with a mat. And it's always fun to peel that tape. So multimedia artboard is a great surface to work on. And it also comes in black. Then we have the Arches oil paper. It comes in different size pads. It comes in larger sheets as well as a roll. And it is the same premise as the multimedia art board because it is ready to go. You don't have to do any gessoing, any type of preliminary work to the paper. You just dive straight in. And here are a couple examples of work on Arches oil paper. So it is a fantastic surface. I love to use the oil paper and it also dries a bit faster than what things do on our panels. Now, I use freezer paper, just your standard Reynolds Kitchens freezer paper as my palette. Uh, this way I can have a palette as large as I want in my studio on any given day or as small as I want. And after the palette uh, is very messy after a day of painting, if you have a little bit of paint left, you can scoop it up put it on a new piece of uh, freezer paper, palette paper, and begin a new palette that's gonna be nice and fresh and clean. And um, this paint, once you mix it with your cold wax, uh, and I mix a lot of paint every day that I'm in my studio painting, it will keep for quite a few days and you can always, if you've got extra paint left over, put it in little jars or cups that have a lid or do a little spritz with Gamsol, which is our solvent that we use. It's an odorless mineral spirit. Let me show you the Gamsol. Um, and we use Gamsol for a lot of our techniques as well as cleaning your tools. It's a great way to clean uh, your palette knives and everything. But you can do a little spritz and then reconstitute your paint and wax. 
all of this paint that I have out today are just some of my favorite colors of paint. And I go ahead when I put the colors I'm going to use out and put out a 50-50 ratio. So if I put this much paint, I'm going to put that much wax. And then you mix it, you fold it and mix it until that wax is totally embedded within the paint. And to keep from wasting paint, I like to just use it on a separate board or sometimes I'll start a dump board <laughs> and put extra paint or what's left over on my palette on a piece of paper or one of your uh, gessoed panels. And that's a way to start a new painting. So what you're watching for is when we squeeze tube uh, paint out of our oil tubes, it's very glossy. So when you mix that wax in, it turns it to a matte look. So you're watching for that gloss to go away and you use a 50-50 ratio. Now you can use a little less. Um, your paintings won't dry quite as fast, but they'll dry faster than just using oil paint that has no cold wax medium in, in them. So now let me tell you about the main tools that we use are silicone scrapers. This is a Mesermeister scraper, squeegee. They're called a lot of different things, but they have that very flexible silicone edge and you can find them in different sizes. Um, you can also find uh, if you've ever been a potter in your life uh, and Pottery ribs will also work. These are very flexible. Look how flexible that is. And then Creative Catalyst also makes a lot of different tools. Then this is what we use to push and pull the paint with. Um, we use a lot of palette knives. I like the palette knife that is a uh, step down palette knife. Some people call it a trowel knife or an offset palette knife, but that seems to work the absolute best. Now, we talked about the solvent and I use Gamsol uh, by Gamblin to do a lot of techniques and I put it in a spritzer spray bottle. This one is very used as you can see. <laughs> I also like to put it in a fine line applicator bottle, and I'll show you how to use that in a minute. Now, if you don't like oil paint, solvent, wax on your hands, please wear gloves. And um, that is a personal choice. You know, take care of your own health and safety first, or you can also use gloves in a bottle which is a barrier cream or lotion that you just rub on your hands before you start painting. And um, it's easier to wash off. So that's a personal choice for you to make. Um, we also, in this type of painting, use color shapers of different types because they are that soft silicone. Creative Catalyst makes their own brand. I think Cheap Joe's also makes his own brand. Lots of those to be able to find the type of tools that you want to use to apply your paint. We also, um, we use a lot of things to dig and scrape with. It is fun to go looking in hardware stores and bakery shops, all kinds of places that you wouldn't think about finding um, things to dig in and make marks because mark making is a wonderful technique that you can use with oil and cold wax. 
We can also use the RNF oil pigment sticks, which are very luscious. They're very much like lipstick. And um, I have found they're, they're not cheap, but if you find a color you absolutely love, it is economical to buy in the larger stick, but they are just creamy and delicious uh, oil pigment sticks. We use a lot of different mark making tools, which I'll show you some of, uh, like the Karen Dash and the Marabou or King Art. Uh oh, sorry, dropped something. Uh, the Marabou or King Art mixed media crayons. Um, you can use charcoal, you can use graphite, you can use powdered pigments and pastel. I don't recommend using oil pastel uh, with this type of painting because the manufacturer does say that oil pastels have a binder in them that never dries. So if you marked with an oil pastel on these beginning layers, then you're putting layer after layer of oil and cold wax on top and that underneath may never dry. So if you've got a beautiful set of the oil pastels, use them as a finish to do some mark making at the end. Maybe when your painting is reaching the dry state, but lots of fun things that we have for mark making. Um, we also use a lot of brayers in this type of work. You can, absolutely can use paint brushes, but I recommend using the soft hair brushes. Um, the bristles do cut in and dig in if you like that bristle brush stroke, that's perfectly fine. Um, but if you use brushes and you want a smoother blended look, use your soft hair brushes. We use a lot of stamps and stencils of various kinds. And I love adding some stencil in for certain effects. So I am going to start painting and show you how I layer some of these pieces of work. So this is an Indian yellow. I like to do a base coat. And this is only going to be seen if we excavate back through. So you don't have to be very particular about this layer. Just cover that gesso. Make sure you've got all the white covered. And this is like your base color that you can dig back down into. This is a little bit of a Sennelier color called Chinese orange. You can add more than one color on your base uh, coat. You can add lots of color if you like. But you're just Picking something that you want to maybe excavate back through to have showing. Not a lot of thinking on this layer, just very fast. And I scrape my edges because I don't want to waste paint. <laughs> then you can put that back on your palette. Now, when this first layer has been done, you set that piece aside and allow it to have some setup time. It does not have to be completely dry when you decide to start those um, secondary layers. It can still be kind of tacky wet, and this one is a little tacky, um, but that about 20 to 30 minutes between layers is what I like to do if I have the time in the studio. And so then you start 
diving in, I paint very intuitively. And um, so I usually don't have much in mind when I start a painting. I just start laying color in and just see kind of what's going to happen. And then I respond to that. So you're adding layers. This is an asphaltum, which is one of my very favorite colors from Gamblin. And if you give yourself that permission to just play and see what happens, see what comes out as this painting starts developing. Lots of beautiful colors. I really love a warm color palette. This is a warm white by Gamblin. Put a little of that in and just see what happens. But you just start layering and playing. That's the thing about oil and cold wax. It doesn't dry as fast as our acrylic paintings. And I also love acrylic mixed media painting, but this gives you a little more time to sort of play with your layers. And let's try some tissue paper. Tissue paper is a great way to make texture and lines and you scrunch it up, lay it where you might want it and using a brayer, brayer that down. So you see where all of these little lines come in your tissue paper, that will leave those lines in your painting. You couldn't paint that every single little line. It would take you forever, but that is so fun to do. Then if you have other boards already uh, with paint on them, you can use this as a stencil and transfer that paint. Once again, very intuitively. So that starts another painting for you. I am usually working on multiple things at the same time because this type of painting, things are in different stages of drying time, setting up time. So it just gives you some texture. Get you moving on another painting. Now, um, like I said, I love to use stencils and stamps. Lots of different stencils that you can purchase. I look for, for stencils lots of places. Um, I love script or numbers in some of my work, but anything that you can push paint through or scrape paint over or press a stamp into can give you extra texture. That's hard to see with the, these lines from the tissue. And if it's something you don't like, you can always go back over it. Just add another layer is another favorite saying of mine. Um, so that's what we're doing back and forth, back and forth, adding layers in. And if the paint mixes, doesn't bother me. I, I kind of like that. Now for this, to put a stencil down, I think that 
I'm going to use a soft foam roller. These you can buy at Michael's or Lowe's Home Depot and you buy the replaceable heads. And pick up paint all around your little foam. And I don't do the whole stencil. I'm just going to do a part of it. So you can see how beautiful that can be. And then, you know, I might turn it a different way. Turn it a different way and put a little in another area. Now, I use my fingers to blend. So if it's something that you don't like, you don't want, you can always blend that out. These paintings change absolutely every time you touch them. Now, if I have, and I usually keep paper towels handy because I'm constantly wiping the edge of my squeegee scrapers, as well as wet ones and paper towels for my hands. Um, using your Gamsol odorless mineral spirits in your spritzer bottle. As long as you have put down a wet layer, let me just cover this. I like to say we're building a painting when we are doing this type of, of oil and cold wax painting. I'm going to spritz. And you want a spray bottle that comes out in little droplets, not a big gush, because that will give you a bullseye. So if you can see how that came out in little droplets, then we sit <laughs> and we wait for a bit because you have to give that time to eat through and excavate back through down to that lower level, those base levels that you put on in the beginning. So I usually wait about 45 to 55 seconds. If the paint is really thick, you don't have to wait as long, but if you've put on a very thick layer, it can take more time to go through that fresh wet layer of paint that you just put on. So clean your tools, do whatever, sing happy birthday. <laughs> That's what I tell a lot of my students, sing happy birthday two or three times, and then you're ready to pull, um, pull this off. So I'm using a clean scraper, and I'm just gonna pull down like so. And I wipe every time that I pull. So it gives you this really pretty little textural element that's showing through to what we did in the beginning layers. Now, I love using that technique. It's one of my favorites. But let me show you this too. I'll pull this piece back that we used some of the um, transfer on from the tissue paper. So I'm going to come in maybe with some of this white because we've got some white starting on here. A little warm white. It's a, such a freeing type of painting that we can do with this. I'm picking up a little of the Chinese orange, which is a beautiful blend together with any of your whites. Now, if you put Gamsol, the odorless mineral spirits in your fine line applicator or needle nose bottle, 
You can also do this technique. Once again, and you can shake it to get dots. But once again, according to how thickly or thinly you have put those layers on will determine how long you have to allow it to sit. But it has to be on a fresh, wet layer of paint. You can take an old painting that you've had sitting in the studio for a long time that maybe you just abandoned or um, you just didn't like it and you quit working on it. Put a fresh layer of paint on it and start trying some of these techniques and it becomes a whole new painting, gives it a new life. You can see that you have more control with the fine line applicator bottle. So you have all these amazing lines and then you can blend your edges. You can keep working and working on these. It's just such a fun, fun way to work on your abstract paintings. And don't forget, turn your pieces because it might actually look better in a different orientation than, you know, how you started working on it. Um, I really like corrugated cardboard for texture. And you can ha have wider corrugated cardboard, smaller. Don't forget if you love your Starbucks or your Krispy Kreme coffee, <laughs> those little, um, little um, sleeves that they put on your hot cups have great texture on the inside. So don't forget about those as a textural element. And into that wet paint, I can make those marks. Let's try a wider piece, maybe this way. So you get that. Let's see if that will transfer a little bit. So you're moving those things all around your painting and you're building and building these areas. It's just so much fun. Now, another thing that I absolutely love to use for a textural effect. Let's see, let me put, let me put a layer down. Mix a little of that. It's all play. So much play in this type of work. And it's a freedom uh, that a lot of people who, once they try oil and cold wax, they just absolutely fall in love with it because you're a kid again. You get to play and just have fun. So another thing that I love to use, and it's harder to find now, but is embossed wallpaper. What wonderful texture that we can have from embossed wallpaper. So if you put some wet paint down and then place that with your brayer. Brayer that in. Whoops. You can see that. Let's try to move some of that up here as well. Very faint. It's almost like a ghost image, but it gives you a beautiful look. And you can blend part of it out. You can totally cover part of it back over. 
so much we can do. Add a touch of that little red back in. And this is an Albert pink, which is a Charvin color. It's a French paint that is absolutely gorgeous. All the Charvin colors are so beautiful. And the only place you can purchase Charvin is through Jerry's Artorama in the States. So also with our oil and cold wax painting, you can do collage. So if you love collage and um, gold leafing or foiling into some of your work, it's a beautiful way to add some of that. Uh, make sure that your collage papers are lighter weight. We can find so many beautiful collage papers. Old antique books make great collage paper, but any of the tissue papers that have um, something on it that you enjoy really, really can be a nice addition to a painting. So what we do is we use our, our clear cold wax as our adhesive. Just pick up some on your finger. Now, if the paint is freshly wet like this is, you can just use that. But I, I want to show you how to put the cold wax down. Just rub it in, or you could do this with your squeegee. Tear a piece of this. I might do something this way. Just make sure that either the paint and wax is wet underneath or you put down a fresh bit of cold wax, the clear cold wax. Then I use not tissue paper, but newsprint. Because as you saw in the beginning, your tissue paper leaves all those little delicate lines. So your newsprint does not. Put that on top of where you placed your collage. And just brayer it down very nicely. so that it is embedded into your painting. Now, if you use the tissue paper that, or any type of paper that you can see through, I like to look at the color that is beside of the area where I put my collage paper down and I will paint right on top of that collage paper to really incorporate that. Mix a little of this. Make sure you press those edges down. So you can paint right on top of your collage, leave as much of it showing as you like or kind of um, push it back and push it into that painting. So you're really incorporating that in. And once you have it in place, you can brayer over it again. When, it, when you know you're finished with the painting, 
You can put a layer of the clear cold wax over it. Make sure your edges are pressed down. And it's just a fun way to work. And you can see if you use one of your transparent colors like this Chinese orange, you can still see all the lettering and the words or whatever that you have used. Now in that same thought process, we can use gold leafing. And <clears throat> the same principle holds is that you have to have a wet layer of your wax and paint or put down some of the clear cold wax and find a place that you might like to put a little bit of a glitz. You know, some paintings need a little touch of glitz. Um, I don't like to overdo this technique, but it can make things very beautiful. And you know, they make gold, silver, copper, and this variegated. Let's try this variegated. And I'm just going to pick up a small bit of that. Many different ways that you can do this too. And put that down. Press it in. And you can use a solid piece of it. Or you can break it apart. Let me get a different piece of newsprint. So you can keep that solid piece, or I like to use my finger and just sort of break it apart very intuitively. So I've got bits and pieces kind of floating around. You know, if you don't like it, you can use something hard and scratch through it. But so many beautiful things that we can do with building all of these layers. Just make sure you know that it's all pressed in. And if pieces drift off, I like it. I like it all the better. <laughs> Let I just allow the painting to kind of happen on its own. There we go. So you can see that touch of glitz. A lot of fun to work with your leafing products. Um, now, when your paintings sort of reach a drier state, which this painting is drier. This is why I work on multiple things at the same time. Um, you can use a lot of your mark making tools then, like your Karen Dash, your King Art, or Marabou, um, which are the mixed media crayons. They have wax in them. Let's see. And the King Art, they will dry in 24 hours. I love to do a simic writing in my work, which is writing with no meaning. And that just floats right on the top. It's just adding another layer. Um, and any of these will work when your painting is to that drier stage. Let's try the white. So you can do lots of mark making in your final stages with any of these mark making um, type of tools. There's art graph, there's charcoal, there's pastel, like soft pastel or pan pastel that you can use. Um, and another thing I want to show you on this wet piece is 
that you can use a skewer, a bamboo skewer or something with a sharp end and actually scratch through. You all can see that. But you can scratch through the wet paint. So this was a um, asphaltum underneath. And you can see how that comes back up. So don't forget all of your scratching through. And then, you know, if it's something that you love, keep it. If it's something you're not 100% happy with, you just continue to layer over top. It is just one of the most fun experimental types of painting that I feel you can do, which really is a great thing for us in ISEA <laughs> because we love experimenting. We do, Lisa, you're fascinating. I could watch you all day. Oh, thank you. Thank so, you so much. Oh my gosh. I'm just mesmerized. Um, I just love all the work. We have a lot of questions to go to, go to and I have a few myself, but. Okay, let me switch my get camera to, back. Sure. And Thank we'll get to. One second here. Some Thanks. of these. Hi. Oh, so much fun. You're right. Just real yes. quick before we get to everybody's questions, before, when you started, did you start with oil or were you uh, like a watercolor painter and then move, slowly moved into this whole media? Uh, this whole genre. I, yeah. Well, I started as a very realistic oil painter. Okay. I did uh, landscapes, still lifes. I did portraits for a number of years. Um, in oil, and then I moved into um, acrylic. Okay. I have done just about every media that there is. I did pastels for a long time, and I was working in acrylic mixed media and so interested in these surfaces and erosion and, you know, just what nature does to things. And I just, I was working myself really hard with my acrylic. And then I discovered cold wax and oil. So I kind of went back to my start with oil paint, but adding the cold wax just, oh, it was just the medium to do these surface paintings that I had been looking for. Well, you look like you're having a lot of fun. So that's I, great. I'm so having fun. <laughs> So we've got a lot of questions. The first one, um, can you add a drying agent to the coal wax oil mixture to speed up drying time in a cold climate? Um, you can. The uh, Galkid uh, is one thing that a lot of people add that even uh, speeds it up all the more. Um, so uh, your Gamsol also speeds up the drying time. The wax itself speeds up the drying time, but yeah, there are other things that you can add. Yeah, all right. And someone wanted to know what was in the fine line applicator application bottle that you, that, which was cool by the way, you did all those swirls and then you- Yes. Moved. Oh yeah, that was like, wow. Uh, that is the Gamsol, okay. just your, your regular odorless mineral spirits. And you can also use the Gamsol uh, to thin your paint out. You know how we as uh, acrylic painters love our golden liquid paint because it's, um, it's soupy and loose. You can do the same thing by adding some of the Gamsol to your paint. Okay, good, good. Can you work with cold wax and oils directly over acrylic paintings or should you gesso all over it first? Um, you can gesso over it, you know, because acrylic loves gesso too. But, you know, you can do a complete acrylic underlayer do yeah. a complete painting. And I, that's one of the courses that I, uh, it's a mini course uh, that I offer on uh, my courses, which is starting with acrylics 
and finishing with oil and co-wax because that is the rule. You can always put oil over acrylic, but never acrylic over oil, but it makes the most beautiful, beautiful paintings. So you would, you would be showing some of your acrylic work underneath or portions of it and just adding yes. a little bit of cold wax and oil to it. Yes. Okay. Oh, that sounds a lot of fun. We've got a lot it's of- a, It's a great combination technique that we can yeah. do. Yeah. Well, then we got all those old paintings we don't know what to do with. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, someone wanted to know the name of the dark paint, brownish paint in on your palette. That is Asphaltum made by Gamblin. And it is the most- delicious dark that I have ever used. I use it in just about all of my paintings. And when I post things online on social media, I'll have people to say, I love the way you use black, when a lot of the times it is asphaltum and not black, but it reads very dark. And yet yeah. it has a warm undertone. And it is one of those paints that you can paint very opaquely with it mm -hmm. or you can thin it out a little bit with your cold wax or your gamsol and it becomes very transparent so it's a it's a delicious color would you spell that is it a yes it is just like it sounds asphaltum a-s-p-h-a-l-t-u-m okay you can see great how much i use yeah <laughs> Love our lot. Let's see. Someone has made a comment. Maybe um, Power Text makes a cold wax. Oh, someone. Oh, before I go back, um, someone wanted to know if you could mix cold wax with acrylic paint. No, no, not this type of cold wax, but Power Wax, Power Text does make a uh, wax that works with acrylic. Okay. Yeah. And I have tried it. I use it quite a lot in my acrylic pieces because it does the same thing in that it bulks that painting up. Mm -hmm. So you can add thicker, uh, more wonderful layers with that wax in your acrylic paint. And of course, um, Golden makes so many additives too that we can add to our acrylic paint to sort of get the same look. But it is a different wax than the type of wax that we are using. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yes. Let's see what else we got. Um, how long does the paint stay once it's on the palette? I think you kind of addressed that earlier, but you can save what you, like you've got all those paints on your palette right now. Yes. Do you scrape them you all and put them in containers or can you just cover them up in something else? You can cover them with a piece of saran or a piece of kitchen wax paper. And when you come back to your studio tomorrow or three days from now, if it has started to set up a little bit, mm -hmm. do a little spritz of your Gamsol and then remix the paint and wax. Or you can take a little tiny bit of extra cold wax and put it in that paint color and reconstitute it and it comes back to life. So it does keep for, for several days. Okay, great. And the ratio of wax and oil, I believe you said was half and half, but- Yes, 50-50. Okay. You mm -hmm. can go less wax, but your paintings will not dry as fast. Yeah, okay. And as soon as you put the cold wax over gold leaf, does it then become a matte finish as it well does, lose it, it does as it, it lose does it. dull it down just a little bit okay but not enough till it uh you know really makes a difference okay yeah. and i think you've already can you do cold wax over an acrylic painting on stretch canvas so can you can you work on a stretch canvas um, i i tell my students that especially getting larger it is not recommended to do cold wax on stretched canvas. Okay. Now, um, Gamblin does make a product called G-Gel or Galkid Gel that you put uh, 
into your cold wax and oil paint mixture on your palette. And that is supposed to make it a little more flexible because we really don't know what's going to happen on these surfaces 50 or 100 years from now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's best done on a hard, rigid surface. Okay. Yeah. Small right. pieces I feel okay about doing on canvas, stretch canvas. But the larger you go, I'm, I would rather be on a hard panel. Right. And like or you paper. said, go to Home, Home Depot, have them, have them cut one up for you. Yes. Okay. Yes. And what did you say that, um, I know you, oh, tempered, tempered masonite. Is that tempered shiny? masonite. Shiny? Yes. In the, okay. Because I've used that before on some big pieces. Yeah. Um, it's great for oil painters, uh, the tempered masonite, but you do have to gesso it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and you, you like that, um, Utrecht, Utrecht. Correct. Okay. Utrecht or the uh, Liquitex, I think it's called super heavy bodied, something like that, because one coat, it's so thick, it covers everything and it's sealed. Um, and you don't have to spend all your time gessoing. <laughs> I know, especially if you're working big. Okay, we had a couple more. Um, can I use gesso to prepare a birch panel cradle board or do I need to put another protective layer on something? You can yeah. use wood, absolutely. A lot of uh, painters love the wood feel. So as long as the surface is gessoed, you can absolutely use it. Um, just make sure that wood is cured so that it doesn't ever crack. Um, also for watercolor painters, uh, because I painted in watercolor as well for many years and with acrylic um, on watercolor paper. So your arches watercolor paper, if you've got bukus of that paper, <laughs> gesso it and it's good to go for your oil and cold wax. Great. Okay, yeah. and that's, I think that was another, can you adhere oil cold wax painting on Arches oil paper to a cradle board? So I'm thinking yes. she wants to know, once you've done something on paper, oil paper, can you put it? And what Absolutely. do you do to, to adhere it, I guess? Is I use the Line Co pH Neutral. You can purchase that at most of your um, art supply stores or mm -hmm. Amazon. And I, I'll mention too, uh, shameless self-promotion, but I do have an Amazon storefront where yeah. I try to list a lot of my supplies that I use when I teach workshops um, and when I, you know, have my courses uh -huh. so that uh, people can look on my Amazon storefront and find some of the supplies. And of course, some you have to buy from your art supply stores. Sure. So would that, how do you look that up? Lisa Boardwine? Um, I will have to send that to you because there's a Lisa B. Boardwine shop, Amazon. But I will find that and send it to you and maybe okay. you can put it we out for everyone. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, if, if no, oh, we have more. <laughs> I want to get to my question. Let's see. If you paint on paper, how do you frame it? Is it behind plexi, plexiglass? No, I have been a framer since 1983. I have owned a frame shop and um, I was old school. And, you know, I never would put a piece of a painting that had oil paint on it under glass. Yeah. But because you are using this cold wax and it evaporates everything quickly out, Mm -hmm. these pieces on paper are beautifully presented by putting a mat and a frame around them. You just have to wait until the painting is completely dry and the paper pieces dry faster even than our panels. Um, but wait till it's completely dry. Always okay. be sure that you use a mat or a spacer so that the glass does not ever touch the painting. Okay, but that makes sense. Yeah, no, they're no. gorgeous, gorgeous, matted and framed. Typically, that would take how long to dry then if it's done on paper? I would say give it about two weeks. Okay. 
you know, that's that's a lot faster than our old oil painting where we had to wait six to nine months for it to dry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is much faster. And it's also according to the ratio of paint and wax that you're using of how fast it will dry. Great. Another variable, of course, is the temperature in your studio and the humidity of where you live. Good. Yeah. Well, you, Lisa, you've given us lots of information. I just, and if you can, like in 30 seconds, say, what do you do when, um, you know, you start a painting like this? Do you get to the point? Because I have a lot of, I call surfaces yeah. that I look at and I don't know what to do with next. You know, I put it away for a while, then I bring it back. Um, do you get stuck when you try to figure out what to do next on some of your compositionally? Yes, I get stuck. <laughs> and I think, you know, the way I paint is I start very intuitively. I just want to see what this color will look like against another color or what interesting texture can I achieve in this painting. And I just paint, I don't think, I paint and react to what I see. However, when I'm getting to the end, I do then look at composition because I am a big uh, supporter of great composition in paintings because it can make your painting successful. Sure. If you know composition in art, and that goes for abstract art as well, it all works the same. And your paintings will be much more uh, successful if you look for that compositional element. For me, I do it towards the end. For okay. some, they like to start with a certain composition, like a cruciform or a horizon, and work that way. And, you know, we, all of our brains work differently. So I say do whatever feels right to you, but using those compositional elements in art will really make a difference in how a painting comes together and stands up, you know, in the end as a good painting. Perfect. You're right. Yes. Thank you. I know we went over, but you just have um, your wonderful teacher and you had a lot to share with our group. So oh, thank, thank you. you again. And I, I better turn it over to Haley before I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. I loved all of your language and how you described um, your process, the digging, excavating. I felt like I was, you were taking us on an adventure. Yes. So <laughs> I could see, I really appreciate that. And thank you to all who joined. The questions were wonderful. And we look forward to seeing you again at our next presentation in May with Mark Mahaffey.